Louisiana Beer Reviews Victory Java Cask Coffee Stout Aged in Bourbon Barrels. Okay, this was sent to me this week by Kevin. Thank you, Kevin of Pennsylvania, for sending this to me. Um, it's a flavored ale, 14.3% alcohol. Brewmaster's approval, Bill Ron. Bourbon Barrel Aging Marius Vanilla Oak. Okay, well, let's look at the notes. Um, enjoy by October 11th of 2019. Okay, good. It's got the date, guys. The Best Buy date, at least. What about the Born On date? I uh, don't see it. All right. Um, there are some video reviews. I intend to watch them. I'm not going to watch that video review that's one hour and so minutes long. Yeah, I know my Dawn Busters taste challenges can go long, but those are kind of lighthearted and they're not entirely serious things. Okay, 14.3% alcohol. International bit turn this unit's not given. Apparently this was introduced in 2015 and wasn't bottled at first. Now it is. I don't know what bourbon barrels this is aged in. The malts are Pilsner, Munchen, uh, chocolate, dark caramel, oats, and roasted barley malt. Chinook and Cascade are the hops. And they add a, a coffee called Smart Blend Coffee. I'm not familiar with Smart Blend Coffee. It gets an outstanding score in Beer Advocate, what they call outstanding, 86 out of 100. Rapier says, no, it's 99 out of 100. And a 94 in the style, Imperial Stout. And Untap gives it an 83 out of 100, which is a very high score for Untap, because you'll notice most of their be beers be around 70, their ratings, their check-ins. Now, Kevin sent me a letter. He said, enjoy, Jay. That's my nickname, Jay. All right. I just wanted to take time to thank you again for everything it is that you do. I know for a fact that just by watching your videos, you have changed the way that I view beer. And so you can imagine just how many other people have had their beer drinking experience changed from just watching your videos. Be now, I'm, I'm going to go fast. Before I started watching... Before I started to watch your videos, I was your typical quote-unquote beer snob, only drinking craft beers, but you completely changed the way I view a beer. From watching your double-down videos in particular, those are some of the best on your channel, by the way, he says, I love how you dive into the history of the beers and share some great information that I would have never known. I now have a respect for Coors, Miller, and Isaac Bush, Paps, and so on. A good beer is just that, a good beer no matter who makes it. And you helped show that to me, you helped show that to me, whereas before I would have considered that those companies making good beers would be, that those companies making good beers would be blasphemous. So consider these three beers my way of saying thank you. And who knows, I just might end up sending you more beers that I find interesting. I go along with that idea. But actually, I tell people, don't send me beer. It's too much of an expense and an aggravation, but people insist. You are the best beer reviewer on this platform, and I truly mean that, and I hope that you know that. I appreciate that. No one else goes into the detail that you do. I think some do. Side note, I live near Philadelphia here in Pennsylvania, so we get a ton of stuff just like you might be getting down there near New Orleans, so we get some pretty cool stuff like a good amount of alchemist stuff started to show up around here pretty cool. I don't think we've gotten that here. Then he tells me about his job and he wants to cook a good meal for me if I'm ever up in Philadelphia. I might go back there uh, actually. Again, I've driven all the way to Boston and actually at one time we drove to Nova Scotia so Philadelphia is not too far. So Victory Java Cast, this is the 2017 edition. Okay. He says, personally, this is my favorite barrel-aged stout on the market. I'm not just saying that because I'm a local fanboy. The flavor of this beer is unrivaled. The coffee used in this brew is locally sourced from a Philadelphia coffee roaster. JB's, I believe. Johnny Brenda's. They're, but they're saying, um, Johnny Brenda's, they're saying Smart Blend. But that might be the company that makes Smart Blend. I'm not sure. Because we got all these New Orleans and Louisiana coffees, community coffee, Riley Foods coffee like RT and Louisiana, 
we get different things here. Although Folgers, the huge Folgers plants are in New Orleans, the biggest coffee mills in the world apparently. Folgers and then the other Folgers, two of them actually, in New Orleans. Uh, I'll just let you find that out for yourself, that it's that great. The bottle I sent you is from 2017, which was the first year they started to put it in the 12-ounce bottles. Prior to that, it was only sold in a 750 milliliter format. Okay, alrighty. I'm so excited to get this. <laughs> we don't get victory beers anymore around here. It's uh, like I was talking to a distributor salesman just yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. He told me, he said... No, it was Wednesday. He said, um, you notice that all, all the uh, craft beers got chased out of the market? I said, yeah. And we were talking about a particular craft beer brand from Texas. He said, that's, that's trash here. In other words, it doesn't sell at all here. He said, we can't give that stuff away. I said, what's, I said, it's popular in Texas. He said, yeah, but all the Louisiana beers are killing the import. When we say import, we mean out of Louisiana craft beers. I said, I noticed that. Chasing them off the shelf. So, so those victory beers I used to get years ago, can't find them. And that goes for so many other brands. All right. So around here, I don't know about your state, but around here, if it's a Louisiana beer, people just run and get it. And it just kills off the other ones. Okay. That is so dark brown. But it doesn't look black. Honestly, and the lighting here is not even that good. Because it's so overcast and rainy outside. But it does look dark brown. The darkest brown you could see. This side of black. And it's a thin beige head. It would be thicker in a narrower brim glass. Here we go. Time to go. I wish I knew what bourbon barrels. I mean, do we have, I guess we have a lot of choices, but typically it's Heaven Hill or Buffalo Trace or uh, Midwest Grain Products over there, the old uh, Seagram's Distillery, which still makes Seagram's Seven Crown in um, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. That's usually the ones they're using. <sighs> Let's remember the ABV. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. 14.3%. Ouch. Oh, okay. It's pungent. It's full in the nose. It's heavy, heavy, heavy malt. There's a lot of wood here. It doesn't really smell like bourbon barrel wood. It just smells like wood. Like if they're sawing wood. Maybe oak? <laughs> I don't know. And maybe coffee? Yeah, coffee. Medium to dark roast. Not full on dark roast, but medium to dark roast coffee, I think. Now I know a lady from Lafayette Parish, Louisiana, and she says, I hate beer. I said, what do you mean? I can't stand the taste of malt. Ugh, and she shuddered like when she said it. She would maybe regurgitate if she smelled this is so heavily malted she would just she would hate it I like malt but I did uh, I made a mistake I did the uh, Guinness foreign extra stout with ice cream and ice cream uses the malt and it was too much malt on malt and it's sort of like a stomach turning experience after a while It's a nice aroma. I don't know if it's a fabulous, wonderful aroma, but it's nice. Now, I know when Kevin sent me these three beers, he wanted me to give a, an honest review. He's not a person to say, well, I'm on it. I want it to be a gamed thing. I'm sending it to you so you give it a high score. We, uh, uh, we don't play that game at Louisiana Beer Reviews. You send it at your own risk, and he's well aware of that. So not in love with the aroma. It's okay. The appearance is really good. Okay, so we got a really good appearance, say a B plus. The aroma is mm, like a C, but the flavor is where it's going to count for the most part. So let's go into the flavor. Mm. 
And we have to remember, mini bourbon barrel aged stouts are that. They're imperial stouts and they're aged in bourbon barrels. But here's, we have, here we have the coffee edition, the Java stout. So we have to take that into account. It's going to be different. It's, it's like if they do the vanilla and then they got the orange flavor and all these other items. Damn. Hey, I'm going to have to call you back. I'm in the middle of a video review, but it won't be long. Okay. All right, bye. <laughs> oh, sorry for saying damn. <laughs> David. All right. I could edit that out. I don't really like jump cuts. I only edited a few things out in the past. These are things that probably... I said, I don't know, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but it wasn't involved with the review. I, I would never cut that out. Just something, just offhand, stupid, you know. But, um, very multi, full body, full body, not heavy. Let's get that straight. It's not a heavy bodied beer, but it's a full bodied beer. And there's a difference. Um, it's, like a big sponge and it's full of water, you know, that kind of situation. Um, the finish is not too sweet. It's like medium dry. It's not too sweet. It's like medium wet dry. So it's not too sweet. It's not too dry. And notice I've not mentioned anything about burnt or acrid or any of those things. It is not burnt. It's not acrid. It's not over roasted. It's like perfected in that way. Okay. Um, there's cream, cream, or maybe half and half. <clears throat> the good coffee, like a cold brew, so to speak, type thing. Um, whoa, I haven't even talked about the alcohol. You know why? I haven't picked it up. Now, if I start slurring and have trouble saying the S, then you say, ah, kicking in. At 14.3, we would have to expect that that would happen. But it's not boozy, and it's not alcoholic, and it's not... Because that will turn some people off. They say, I don't like liquor. and They like beer, but when it starts tasting, tasting boozy, it just bothers them to no end. It doesn't bother me, but it, do, it bothers other people. But this does not have that. Nope. So, you notice I was a little down on the nose, on the aroma. No sediment. Nice looking bottle. I gotta take a good photo. It's like you're looking down into the to the barrel with the coffee. <laughs> coffee bubbles. Kind of a strange fizziness though. Oh, that's okay. I'm not gonna say A plus because the nose just throws it off. It's the flavor is fabulous. Like the flavor is a hundred. Okay? And we were having a discussion about hundreds, and somebody was saying, you're being a contrarian. I mean, I don't even know what you're talking about, being a contrarian. <laughs> I would give it a hundred if it was a hundred, okay? I'm talking about any beer. And I'm not gonna, I'm not just gonna not give it a hundred because I'm an old gruffy, I'm an old gruff, can cantankerous guy, I'm not gonna give a hundred. That's craziness. You would be careful to give hundreds. You wouldn't just throw those out. I have done it. I've done it with Voss Flatarian 12, which is higher than 100. St. Bernardus Abbott 12, which is arguably higher than 100. And things in the Black Albert in the Tokyo, no go no Tokyo uh, horizon. Um, but the nose, it's a little, it's a little like spinach. And I, I've gotten this with other stouts, imperial stouts. It's like spinach salad starting to turn. I don't know what causes that. Some of the science scientists that watch my videos might know. So that's a detriment. That has to knock it down. And I think, I think aroma is important with beer. Very important, actually. So we're going to say 95 out of 100, which would be most excellent. An A, a most excellent beer. But like I always advise people that watch my videos, you have, you must, it is imperative, 
You must call them as you see them. And some people will say, well, I'm sorry, but i got to give it a, a lower score than you. I say, no, 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 no. That's, that, that cannot be. You cannot apologize. You have to call it as you see it. And I'm going to call it as I see it. And I think it's an A. Most excellent beer. And, I, and I'm sure it's a very expensive ale. Stout porter. Um, and Kevin, I appreciate it. I'm going to do the other beers that you sent. I'm very excited about those. But that's what we're going to say. A most excellent beer. I don't know the price, but I have a feeling it's quite high. You have to take that in consideration if you're buying it. Um, in my case, it was sent to me. Uh, that it, so the price is irrelevant to my experience. But I'm. I, but that that's because somebody sent it. But in in normal circumstances, you would have to buy the product. So, les les bon temps relay, a most excellent beer nonetheless. And I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana.